Live, it's NECN Midday. Right now on NECN, all eyes on Arthur as the East Coast prepares as the hurricane surges up the Atlantic coast. Marching on, the threat of Arthur did not stop one big celebration this morning. Cleaning up, severe storms leave a path of destruction across New England. And former chief charged an embattled former officer facing new charges this morning. Our top story, all eyes on Arthur. Good morning and thanks for joining us. I'm Christy Lee. And I'm Brian Burnell. July 4th, one we are sure to remember because Arthur is barreling up the coast as a Category 1 hurricane. If you're heading to Fenway for today's game, well, turn around. It's been canceled <laughs> because of the weather. Thousands are already without power after Arthur made landfall along the outer banks of North Carolina early this morning. We have team coverage as the storm continues to churn up the east coast. Our Justin Michaels is live in Chatham where the town's parade is wrapping up, but we want to get to our Chief Meteorologist Matt Noyes with uh, Arthur's latest projected path, Matt. Yeah, thank you very much and a happy Independence Day to you, New England. Thanks for being with us. We're watching the storm coming off the Carolinas and now racing northeast out across the open Atlantic waters. You can see that the center of circulation is still very well defined. There are also what we call feeder bands here, bands of moisture that feed right into the center of the storm. When one of those comes overhead, it drops a ton of rain in a short period of time. This thing also dropped a ton of wind on North Carolina. 101 miles an hour was the top gust just offshore of Cape Lookout. 99 miles per hour in Ocracoke. It was about uh, 91 at Frisco, 90 at Hatteras, North Carolina. So there was a lot of uh, wind that came across the Outer Banks. Now, take a look at the wind distribution. We're plotting out the tropical storm force wind in yellow and orange. Orange, and it's all to the southeast of the storm, for the most part, anyway. That's how it's going to stay, by and large. This is a 90-mile-per-hour hurricane, the strongest wind on the east side. A hurricane warning now discontinued along the outer banks of North Carolina. Tropical storm warning remains in effect when you get along the Cape and Nantucket. A tropical storm watch when you head up to Nova Scotia. Now, that tropical storm warning, not the only advisory we have. Also, a flash flood watch for the area shaded in green, most of central and southern New England. And a hurricane warning out in the open water. One thing that we don't really expect to happen is we don't expect the bulk of the storm's winds to get into New England. There may be a brief burst of them that comes later tonight. Uh, let's take it over to Tim Kelly now, who joins us in the coverage. And Tim, the overall steering flow seems to assure to keep this thing out to sea. Hi, Matt. Yeah, and it's especially early this time of year to see a hurricane coming this close to New England. I don't remember any notable A storms. Certainly have the B storms. Bob uh, came through, but that was August 19th when that happened in 1991. So we look at the big picture. It's common. Complicated. It's always complicated. Weather is the attempt of nature to equalize the differential heating of the earth by the sun. So you have the tropical storms that carry the heat to the pole. And on the back side, you have the polar air that comes down. That shows up as white as uh, uh, the orange and dark color near Chicago. That's the dry air. And that tends to erode a hurricane. But you also get hurricanes that go extra tropical. Remember, Sandy, all the confusion. That's because it was an extra tropical storm and some of the worst of that wind was when it was no longer tropical. So the big story so far this week has been a weather front producing severe weather now today. Uh, it's the third day that front's causing problems in New England. Whoops, <laughs> thought I had another graphic <laughs> there. Uh, there's our extended forecast, 75 to 80. Uh, we've got Matt over here. Uh, we're going to yeah. stand together. You know, <laughs> you know what we'll do here, too, Tim. I brought it back to the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got you got your box to stand on. Uh, you know, brought it back over to the water vapor, which is behind you right now. And this this kind of pattern with the jet stream dip with the trough, that's not something that's that's unusual or that hasn't been seen so far this season. Right, right. This is a, called a negative tilted trough, and when that happens, the storms can dig. So what's going to happen to the hurricane is actually going to become a non-tropical. So the tropical situation is going to uh, uh, decrease in intensity, but then right as it starts pulling out tomorrow morning before the sun comes up, it becomes extra tropical, and you can get a burst of wind on the backside tomorrow morning. Could That's be right. worse than the actual hurricane itself. We'll map that wind out for you coming up in just a few minutes. In the meantime, back over to you. All right, thank you to you both. Uh, the weather caused many communities to cancel their July 4th events, but not in Chatham, Massachusetts. No, sir. Town's annual Independence Day parade is just wrapping up. As a matter of fact, our Justin Michaels live in Chatham with more. Justin? Hey, good morning to both of you. That actually kicked off at 930 this morning. It was something people really look forward to all year long here in Chatham, Massachusetts. Coming here, setting their chairs up early 
for the parade, right? July 4th. This is the day to have a parade, and in Chatham, they know how to do it really well. Uh, in fact, take a look right now. This is, of course, bagpipers, and they had crazy cars, and they had all sorts of exciting things from just people walking in the parade to dogs and everything you need for a great parade. But what else do you need for a good parade? You need the people watching the parade. And as far as the, the population here in Chatham, there are about 6,000 people who live here annually. Well, about 15,000 people came out for this parade today, and that's pretty normal. And in fact, we ran into probably the best interview of the day. Take a listen to this. It's pretty, and I like the balloons and all the snap rocks. They make pretty sounds. And I love the fourth day of July because that's the best day. And there you have it. Can you say it any better than that? You're taking a live look again here at Chatham Light. And of course, something very important, more for Mariners today than anything else, those two flags signify a hurricane warning. That's what that means, a hurricane warning. And in fact, when we got here this morning, those flags were not there, just one of them signifying a storm warning. We now have a hurricane warning here, but again, mostly for Mariners. And take a look out here. Beautiful day on the beach right now. Uh, it was a little sketchy this morning with the sea fog. Now it's clearing up and take a look at that group of seals out there. I mean, there's got to be hundreds of them out there sunning themselves. Of course, they may have a little bit of insight into this hurricane that we don't have, but it looks like, for me at least, and for them, they're having a nice day here on the seaside of Cape Cod, right around the elbow, if you can imagine where that is. So just a beautiful day here in Chatham, a beautiful day to have a parade, and they certainly did that, despite the fact that there is a hurricane moving in this direction. From Chatham, Massachusetts, I'm Justin Michaels, NECN. All right, I'm glad everything worked out okay there, but the moisture from Arthur brought severe storms across New England, and in one community, there's speculation that there may have been a tornado. High winds tore the roof off a car dealership in Methuen, Massachusetts. And that's just some of the damage across the city. Our Nicole Jacobs is live in Methuen. She joins us now with a look at the damage. Nicole? Brian, there's plenty of it, starting with here on Emory Street. You can see this door here completely blown out. Residents here seeking cover as the storm moved through this area. If you take a look here at the roof, they've had to patch up the holes that the storm left behind, where tree limbs and branches fell on top of this house. And if you take a look just to the right of that, you can see where huge limbs have already fallen. Neighbors here tell me, before this storm, they were not able to see the sky from that perspective. So that gives you an indication of just how big and how full those limbs were. Taking a look here just across the street, you can see workers are still here and cherry pickers trying to restore services here. No power on this street. You can see front yards littered with tree limbs and that is really the story here on Emory Street but this isn't the only damage I want to get you right to some video of other parts of Methuen we're talking about Lincoln Street Quebec Street where residents say they heard and felt powerful winds powerful rains as well as uh, a lot of thunder uh, they also say that it was something similar to a tornado that's what they felt many of them uh, running down to their basements to seek cover. Also, an auto shop. A couple of workers there were still working throughout the day when the storm came rolling through their area. Here's what the owner had to say. It was like a big wind, like a tornado. You know, I see the trees cross the street like, wow, these trees are coming down. Then the roof start coming up and I move all the cars. I didn't move one of my cars, got scratched, the Corvette over there. And we see this big roof coming down, and we said, we got to close the door. Then we got inside, and it was real bad, real bad. When I see the trees and how dark, and I said, we like in Texas or something. You know, you get scared. I never see something like that. And I took out, this is bad. We've never seen this. So I went inside my shop. Then we, they, you know, they shut the electricity off, and we were home. All right, so a lot of damage, as you can see. Again, a live look here on Emory Street. Workers still trying to repair various services here. Again, no power. You can see them repairing the lines there, as well as just the streets and the yards littered with debris. Interestingly, we passed through several streets here in Methuen just to get to this area. 
where there was no damage, but it appears that just in a very small radius uh, of a couple of streets, a couple of blocks, major damage. So definitely a cleanup day on this July 4th for a lot of residents here, and of course a work day for these workers as they try to repair the services here. Christy and Brian, back to you. All right, Nicole Jacobs reporting for us from Methuen. And this is video just into NECN here in the uh, newsroom. This comes to us from Vermont, where several communities are cleaning up today after fierce storms ripped through there yesterday. State police say Route 30 through Pulteney was completely impassable for a while last night due to downed trees and wires. This morning, Green Mountain Power is working to restore electricity. Some cars also damaged by falling branches. And in Stratham, New Hampshire, residents are cleaning up <clears throat> after storms moved in. Heavy rain and strong winds caused pretty serious damage around the area. Four roads were closed as crews worked to remove debris, including Union Road, where trees toppled onto power lines. And rain forcing police to evacuate thousands from the Esplanade last night. The threat of severe weather forced the city to move the Pops concert and fireworks show up to yesterday. But when the storms rolled in late in the evening, people were told to get out. Our Jeff Sapperstone is in Boston this morning. And a much quieter scene right now than it was here last night when storms moved in and abruptly ended the concert and show here. Right now, they are actually just breaking down the stage. Normally on this day, they'd be setting up for the big fireworks show. Of course, it was moved to yesterday because of the storm that is moving in. Organizers actually were forced to move the fireworks up a bit to 10 o'clock last night. They went off for about 20 minutes and there was no 1812 overture like there usually is. The storms moved in and everyone was evacuated from the Oval. Of course, the entire concert moved today from yesterday because of Arthur, which is expected to hit this afternoon and late this evening. Police say it was an orderly evacuation last night and organizers of this event say it wasn't the ideal situation, but they say it was the right choice to make. Nothing any of us want to do. It's extremely unfortunate, but we also know when the storms came in, the storms would have came in during the fireworks. And the alternative to that is not what any of us want. So it was the right decision. And no one was injured in the evacuation. The rest of the show went off just fine. In Boston, I'm Jeff Sapperstone, NACN. Just ahead, Independence Day tragedy, a toddler drowns after falling into a family pool in Rhode Island. And lucky lobsters, a one in a million find inside two Connecticut grocery stores. Plus, tracking Arthur and Hurricane continues to barrel across the East Coast this morning. Your forecast is next. Wait there, you got just what I need. Everything for my home, you got it for me. I've never seen selection quite like this. Every color and size in my mind. They have every single thing on my list. And with 70% off, who knows what I'll find. Wait there, you got just what I need. Everything for my home, you got it for me. Wait there, and the shipping was free. Now my home's the home I wanted to be. Shop everything home at Wayfair.com. One of the things that interested us in moving out to the country was that we really wanted to contribute to something, and the cafe is one manifestation of that. Let's create a place where people could come and gather and talk. I think that our children have learned from us taking this risk. Witnessing us will one day give them the courage to try something. We are the Lichtentals, and we have Blue Cross Blue Shield. How do you measure a great bank? It's in the storied places and traditions of an institution with the wisdom that brings successful change. Thoughtful leadership, embracing the freshness and color of new traditions and new families with new stories. As Hingham Savings brings community banking to new neighborhoods in new places, loyalty and trust will be the true measure of our success. Hingham Savings. Oh, what have we here? Iced coffee from Cumberland Farms. Delicious. Thanks, honey. Now, right, let's do this, guys. Wait. Oh, okay. It's too good to put down. Farmhouse blend iced coffee from Cumberland Farms. Just 99 cents, any size. Sometimes the best spine surgery may be no surgery at all. 
At Brigham and Women, spine surgeons and other specialists work together to first offer innovative non-surgical solutions. If surgery is needed, these experts pioneer the latest advances and set standards nationwide, including surgeries done through ever smaller incisions so patients can get back to what they enjoy sooner. Life-giving breakthroughs. It all starts here. Brigham and Women's Spine Center. Stay with NECN for complete coverage of Hurricane Arthur. Continue to track Hurricane Arthur. Your viewer photos are continuing to wow. pour in. Take a look at this. This is a photo of Salem Harbor taken last night by Rick and Poor Joan from Wilmington, Massachusetts. And then we'll go to Natick, Massachusetts. A photo sent to us by Jeff Guzzi. Man, we do That's see this okay. happen throughout the yeah. summer. You know, car, uh, trees come down on top of parked cars. It's really, it's sad. Email your pictures to us, but take them safely if you, if you would, please. NECN.com, share it at NECN.com, and we may use your photos on the air. That dramatic photo, I try, I, you know, you see scenes like that, I'll try to take a picture like that and it just won't turn out. That's amazing. It is, it's incredible. And you know, the, the storms had astounding power with them yesterday. The energy came from the jet stream winds that were coming in, but the moisture actually was fed by some of this uh, Hurricane Arthur streaming off the north side of the storm. Now we want to take a look at where we stand and where we're going through the day today. So let's bring you over to the coastal marine forecast. We'll start out with a look at the hurricane warning. That's right, hurricane warning that's out for the waters, not for the land. And even the waters just east of the Cape, just southeast of Nantucket, but not for folks that are on the island, for example. Tropical storm warning is out, however, for the Cape and Nantucket, also for the waters that are south of Block Island Sound. And there's only about a two to four foot swell coming in now. That is going to increase later on in the day today and continue to increase as we get into the night tonight. In the tropical storm warning area, which would be Cape Cod and Nantucket. Not a bad idea to throw some extra lines on the boat and some extra fenders. Never a bad idea when you're going to get buffeted by wind and waves. I would actually suggest this for folks at Cape Ann, too, around Gloucester Harbor, because you may get a little burst of wind in the early morning comes through Cape Ann. Bringing in lightweight objects, definitely a good idea, too. Again, this is Cape Ann and Cape Cod, uh, especially, of course, the patio furniture with the umbrella open. <laughs> Let's go ahead and close that. Uh, and you want to bring in some of the lightweight stuff, the Adirondack chairs, etc. Strongest wind comes in during the overnight and Mostly uh, first part of the night on parts of, uh, let's say, the south coast of Rhode Island, but it won't be that bad. And then early morning tomorrow for most of eastern Mass. Damaging wind mostly stays offshore. Of course, you always want to monitor the forecast updates in any tropical storm warning area. Here's a live radar right now. And what you're looking at is a bunch of downpours lifting up over eastern Connecticut. And then there's more that are over eastern Mass, too. Let's start out in Connecticut. This is where anywhere from Haddam all the way to 395 and then into Westerly, you've got heavy rain. Look at the lightning strikes. Live lightning shows a whole feed of lightning that's coming in off the ocean right now. Here's the rain rate estimates for you. I'll step off the screen for just one moment and show you what's happening with this. Essentially, what we're talking about are rain rates at the core of some of these that are coming down more like three to four inch per hour rainfall rates. Is that incredible or what? Uh, this really is. Uh, some sort of downpour that will put a lot of water on the roadway in a very short period of time. It's not quite that heavy when you come across the Cape Cod Canal. It's more like two inches per hour, but that's still a lot of rain. It's not sitting for one hour in any given spot, so so far no flash flooding, but obviously that's why the concern is there for flash flooding, and the flash flood watch has been hoisted for a good portion of central, southern New England all the way up through the main turnpike. Notice in the Boston area, a little break for the city, but there's more coming up through Norwood and Framingham, lifting off to the north and east, and then the farther off to the east that we go, well, we're talking about more rain that's filled in from western Maine all the way to southern Vermont. So it's all going to keep filling in over the course of the next several hours. Essentially, this afternoon and evening, things will go downhill for us. We'll be talking about what, it, for most, is going to be uh, a transition to an extremely wet late afternoon and evening. Here is the storm circulation that's cutting off to the north and east right now. So if we go through this and show you the National Hurricane Center coordinates with this thing, it's 90 mile per hour sustained winds, gust to 115, chugging along to the northeast at 24 miles. An hour. It's supposed to come just south of Nantucket overnight tonight as an 85 mile an hour hurricane, but the wind by and large is going to stay on the southeast side of the storm. So you'll get, Tim's going to show you the wind here in just one moment. You'll get some, uh, particularly early tomorrow morning. There may be a little stinger of wind that comes in. But for the next few hours, look at 2 p.m. Yeah, rain's filling in more and more. Northern New England, it's uh, pockets of showers that are filling in. But by the time we get along about evening, almost everyone's filled in. But notice Vermont, western New England, far western Mass, Berkshire County. You're not really in it. You got to be dry for most of the evening while the rest 
rest of us get soaked. Uh, this may push some of the streams out of Bankful. You certainly may be dealing with some issues with that uh, in terms of the rivers coming out of their banks, probably mostly small rivers. Notice tomorrow morning, maybe an early morning shower, Cape Ann to Cape Cod that comes with a burst of wind. Other than that, we do clear the skies out a little bit. You know, we can show you the extended forecast here and give you an idea that things do improve for the upcoming weekend. And next week will be near 90 degrees. But let's get it over to Tim. Tim's got to take a closer look at the wind aspect of this and also what leads us in to a nice weekend. They're kind of tied hand in hand, aren't they, Tim? Hi, Matt. I'm, uh, thank you for saving me the good part. The weekend does look nice. Yeah, here is the forecast for the uh, wind, the field of wind. The center of the storm now more than 100 miles east of Virginia, and it's moving to the northeast and accelerating. And like Matt said, look at the heaviest wind on the southeast side of the storm. So 10 o'clock tonight, this is when we get in the closest approach to Nantucket. The tropical storm force winds of 40 mile an hour plus are just south of the island. So we can get some gusts of 40 to 45. And then look what happens tomorrow morning at Cape Ann, 2 o'clock in the morning. What's happening is the hurricane itself is going extra tropical and pulling away, but the upper level winds are aligning. Uh, initially, the wind at the surface is trying to come from the north, but up in the sky, it's from the south, so it negates one another. But then tomorrow morning, both the upper level and the lower level winds are from the north, and that's when we're going to get our heaviest wind at sunrise tomorrow from Cape Ann to Cape Cod. There could be a few gusts of 50 miles per hour. At the same time, we've got 10 to 20 foot seas, so at the ocean, it's not going to be safe to go in the water unless you're an extreme athlete heading out to surf, and I know there'll be a lot of people doing that. It looks like a double overhead surf. The storm is really going to slam Nova Scotia as an extra tropical powerful storm. That's going to draw nice air in from southeastern Canada and for about the sixth weekend in a row. Humidity comes down. The sun comes out each day close to 80 tomorrow. Warmer on Sunday. That high to the south on Sunday may generate a shower or a storm to the north, but it looks like a, another warm Monday coming up next week. Yeah, you know, it's one of these things, Tim, where, where we make that transition from the tropical storm go by nice weather coming in. Sometimes that wind just kicks up the most then. Right tomorrow morning between midnight and 5 a.m. and then the war should be over. All right, excellent. All right, you know, that's the way it looks for now. We'll keep you posted, certainly. In the meantime, back over to you. And thanks, guys. Next on NACN, holiday tragedy. A young boy drowns after falling into a swimming pool in Rhode Island. And tracking Arthur. We're keeping an eye on Arthur as it moves up the coast. We'll have more on the hurricane as it heads toward New England. Money Clip on NACN, a daily discussion on the big business stories you need to know with CNBC insiders you want to hear from. Go inside the deals and innovations that are moving business. Money Clip on NECN, brought to you by findmassmoney.com. Any flashlight can throw a beam, but not even this floodlight is bright enough to light up a room. Now there's the Torchlight from Bell & Howell, the high-tech portable light that's really big on brightness. Look, ordinary flashlights just have a narrow beam, but the Torchlight has a brighter, wider beam that brilliantly lights up the entire room. Even when the power goes out, you won't be left in the dark because its 28 ultra-bright LEDs give you over 100,000 hours of bright, reliable light. It's like having nature's own sunlight at your fingertips. Its high-powered magnetic base lets you securely attach it to any metal surface to give you a steady bright light that brilliantly lights up your entire work area. It's like having an extra pair of hands. It's so powerful it can lift up to two and a half pounds. And with its bright light, there's no easier way to quickly pick up dropped nails and screws. And look, the torch light is also a flashlight. Its five white LEDs give you a clear bright light to easily see wherever you go. The sturdy base keeps the torch light in place exactly where you want it. And the articulating arm has six preset positions that let you tilt the light an incredible 180 degrees to give you total lighting coverage. Use it at your computer as a table lamp or to light up those dark, unlit areas. Better yet, with the built-in hook, you can hang it anywhere and rotate it 360 degrees to give you light wherever you need it. While its rugged construction makes it impact resistant and weatherproof too. And now the Bell & Howell Torchlight is yours for just $10. But wait, call now and we'll double your order. That's two for the price of one. Just pay separate processing and handling. Order your Torchlight now. To order your Torchlight and receive a second one free, have your credit card ready and call toll free. 1-800-711-9090. That's 1-800-711-9090. Call now. 1-800-711-9090. Look what I put together, cheddar and honey nut Chex Mix. Get out of here. I made this belt with traditional bold and peanut butter chocolate Chex Mix. Oh, cool. <laughs> you guys are cute. <laughs> I've got trail mixed peanut lover, chipotle cheddar, dark chocolate, hot and spicy, turtle, cookies and cream, Italian herbs and parmesan, sour cream and onion, and brownie supreme Chex Mix. And it rotates.
<laughs> 20 flavors, lots of pieces. Chex Mix, pick your mix. Now try popped white cheddar and sweet and salty. Now, a Worcester police officer reportedly facing charges accused of breaking into his ex-wife's home while he was in uniform. According to Northborough, Southborough Villager, 44-year-old William Stout broke into the home in Northborough and allegedly beat a man that he found in the bedroom there. According to the paper, the incident happened last month. New this morning, a former Massachusetts police chief is facing serious charges this morning after being arrested on DUI charges with his child in the car. 46-year-old John Lundborn was arrested in Hyannis yesterday afternoon. Police say they found the former Truro police chief sitting in his SUV in a McDonald's parking lot. They arrested him after finding an open <clears throat> container. Lundborn resigned back in 2011 after allegedly crashing a police cruiser while driving drunk. Also on Cape Cod, detectives in Sandwich, Massachusetts are still trying to identify the body found in the parking lot of Town Neck Beach. According to the Cape Cod Times, investigators have enlisted the assistance of an out-of-state crime lab to analyze the DNA for markers that will narrow the ethnicity and age of the victim. The limbless torso was found nearly a month ago. And a tragedy to tell you about a two-year-old Rhode Island boy is dead after an apparent drowning. This happened yesterday afternoon at a home in Cranston. We're told Jace Sherman Chattel fell into the family swimming pool. He was rushed to the hospital where he later died. The incident is under investigation. A couple of rare crustaceans have been saved from a holiday weekend cookout. Two rare orange lobsters were discovered at stop and shop locations in Killingly and in Colchester, both in Connecticut. The lobsters were donated to Mystic Aquarium. Now, according to the University of Maine, the chances of finding an orange lobster is one in 30 million. Our top story this morning, tracking Hurricane Arthur. The storm is continuing to move up the East Coast. We're going to go to our chief meteorologist, Matt Noyes, for the latest on the big story, tracking Arthur. Matt? Okay, thanks very much. You know, watching the eye of Arthur starting to fill in, that's a sign the storm is beginning to weaken a little bit. In terms of the impacts for us, it really doesn't matter whether it weakens a little bit or not. Bottom line, tropical storm warning on the Cape and Nantucket. Flash flood watch for a huge area of central, southern, and eastern New England. And now, just a little while ago, a flash flood warning issued for New London County. This is the storm that we just analyzed on radar with the four inch per hour rainfall rates. Well, that's been enough to do it. Flash flood warning will remain in effect for New London County for the next few hours. Bottom line on that, turn around, don't drown. You don't drive through the flood areas on the roadway, obviously. Radar shows you that feed of moisture coming in. This will expand. More of us will get into this heavy rain over the course of the day. And temperatures are generally running in the 70s for a lot of us in New England right now. And that's where they'll stay throughout the day. Now, the wind stays light for the most part during the day. But when you get in these tropically infused rain bands, it is possible to get some isolated severe storms. So in this area shaded in blue, that's not an impossibility. Sometimes you can even get a very brief tornado that can develop. So we'll keep a close eye on the radar and certainly keep you posted. You can also get the NECN mobile app and be able to see the radar and the storm tracks live for yourself right on through the day. Nonetheless, you can bet we'll have coverage here on air for you. I'll see you again in just a little bit. All right, thank you, Matt. And the weather is being blamed for serious damage in several New England communities. Coming up next, we'll take you to Methuen, where a car dealership lost its roof. Plus, back behind bars, and battle former police chief arrested on drunk driving charges and police say his child was in the car. We'll have more details for you.